Hallelujah. Looking forward to doing this message. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you, everybody. This is Apostle Hopkins. I am so looking forward to sharing this message with you guys. Amen on YouTube, Vimeo.com, and also on Facebook Live. So I ask you to sit back and enjoy this anointed word that I'm about to teach. Oh, by the way, I would like to give a great big shout out to all of our supporters. There are many of you out there that support us with Cash App. I ask y'all to just send a $5, amen, donation. And many of you do it. Now, can I tell you how much I appreciate y'all doing that, but I'm going to be talking a little bit today about biblical wisdom keys in business, engaging roadblocks to vision casting. Now, you know, I love it. I'm getting ready to jump on the part, amen, glory be to God, wherein I go to my scriptures, and I'm going to give you some insights. In my counseling, I do counseling every day. I do deliverance counseling. I do marriage counseling. I do gifts of the spirit counseling. I do the five-fold ministry counseling and counseling over issues in the family. So we do all of that. And if you wanted to sign up for that, you will go to our uh, counseling and deliverance section on our website. And uh, there is a fee for my time. It's a 45-minute de uh, detailed session with me dealing with many different subjects. And as I was giving to tell you earlier, I'm going to go to share stream. I cannot express how much I thank many of you who have shared us the $5 cash app to General Ivory Hopkins. You have shared it with us, amen, and it has been a blessing. Now, I'm going to jump right into this message. Now, I'm going to say this right up front. The first thing we believe more than anything is to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Amen. I want to move up a little further and beginning with my scripture as I teach on this message. And the title of the message is Biblical Wisdom Keys in Business, Engaging Roadblocks to Vision Casting. And I'm going to share some of the things that I think you need to understand how to recognize and grasp when God is dealing with you to cast a vision, bring in a new job, or step up in another level of ministry calling. Proverbs 1 and 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Number one, I want to say to you, amen, and for, no matter what you're doing with your life, Matthew 6.33 says it well. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things shall be added. I know that there are people who are successful who are not seeking the kingdom of God nor God's righteousness, but the problem with it many times, uh, the sin of the flesh, the sin of greed, the sin of the world, and the curses that they open themselves to when they do something deceitful. For the Bible says, wealth gotten by deceit shall diminish. Are y'all hearing me? So I want to say, number one, you want to have the reverence of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What? And the Bible says, fools disguise, despise both wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 8 and 11 says, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. And Proverbs 8, 12 says, I wisdom dwells with prudence and find out knowledge of the witty inventions. Did you hear what it says here? It says, I prudence dwell with wisdom and find out knowledge of all witty inventions. Now, I like it how, how the Dewey Reams Bible says it. it says, I wisdom dwell in counsel and I am present in learned thoughts. I wisdom dwell in counsel and am present in learned thoughts. Every individual that is inspired to go on to any level of walk in God, walk in business, or walk in life, you want to get a hold of biblical wise counsel. Also, the contemporary Bible says, contemporary Bible says, in the book of Proverbs 8 and 12, I wisdom, I am wisdom. Common sense is my closest friend. I possess knowledge and sound judgment. Now, you know, I like that. That contemporary English version, I like how it says this. It says, I am wisdom. Common sense is my closest friend. I possess knowledge and sound judgment. Now, we're going to look at some of these wisdom keys that I have here. And thank you all for coming on, listening to us, amen, 
on Facebook. God bless you. We love you. God bless you all. Bless you, Jackie Williams. Amen. God bless you, Barbara. God bless you, Picola. I, I just thank God for y'all. Praise God. Now, let's get ready to jump into this. Now, I'm going to show you some ways that you can begin to tell how to vision cast some of the things that God has given you, or as I say, wisdom keys, how to deal with the roadblocks that hinders us from moving in and vision casting. Now, number one, these are some practical things, and I won't be on here long, but I will be on here strong, okay? Number one, the stages of capturing creative ideas. Now watch this, Philippians chapter two, verse 13, King James Version says, for it is God, which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now that's my kicking verse. I love that verse. Look what it says in the American Standard Bible. For it is God who is at work in you, both to desire and to work for his good pleasure. I'm telling you out there that the very desire on the inside of you to create a business, to go stronger in the Lord, to come up with a, 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 a idea or work, it comes from God. I'm going to say this again, Philippians 2.13, New American Standard Version, it says, for it is God who is at work in you, both to desire and to work for his good pleasure. So my desire to become, just like when I look at my life, it was God that worked in me giving me the desire to do what I'm doing. It was God who was doing it. God, well, he was working in me and it was God that was causing the desire. So the drive and the desire in you is stirred by God. And I'm gonna go a little further and show you guys how to recognize when a desire, a passion or a leading is led by God. Now look at this, I'm gonna go up a little bit further here. Number one, it causes a stirring on the inside. Now look at that. In other words, when God is getting ready to motivate you to bring something into creation, whether it be a business, whether it be a new job, whether it be a, a, a creating a, a something that has never been created, first thing that starts to happen is there comes a stirring on the inside of you. I say to many of you out there, never be afraid of the stirring. In other words, listen, the dream that just won't leave, are you hearing me? Some of you have been having dreams of doing something. Dreams of becoming something that just won't leave. That's called stirring. If God does not stir that up on the inside of you, my dear friend, you'll not be able to, amen, to tell what God wants you to do. Now, listen, I believe, and I know this is a fact, there are desires of our heart. That means something that you want to do yourself. And then there is a stirring of the almighty. And when God begins to stir something, it's just like my life becoming, uh, going into deliverance, going into counseling, going into moving in wisdom. The Lord was stirring this in me throughout my entire life. Now let's look at the dream, the dream that just won't leave. Pharaoh had the same dream twice. It means that the matter has been determined by God and that God will soon carry it out. In Genesis 41, 32, when, God, when Pharaoh asked Joseph to come and give him the interpretation of his dream, that dream kept repeating itself. Some of the things that God is trying to stir on the inside of you to create a business or to walk in an anointing or calling or a grace or to create and come up with a creative idea or even an ability, it often repeats itself over and over to you. And you get to the point where, and we say stuff like, this just won't leave my mind. Pharaoh had the same dream twice. It means that the, the matter had been determined by God and it will soon be carried out. Look what it says here. Joseph told Pharaoh what his dream meant. Now it is possible to be stirred with a dream, stirred with a, a, an ability that's being created inside you, and you may at first not understand it. That's not a game killer. Just because you, you might be wondering, why in the world do I keep, um, I work over here doing this job, why do I keep dreaming? Why do I keep feeling deep inside of me that I'm not doing the fullness of what is in me? 
Well, Joseph came and told Pharaoh what his dream meant. There would be seven years of abundance in the land of Egypt, followed by seven years of famine. Now, so he, Joseph, when he, attempt, when he, Joseph interprets the dream, notice Joseph also came up with a solution. And I'm going to say this to you. When God stirs something on the inside of you that he wants you to bring in the earth, he will also come up with a clarity and a solution how to make it happen. I'm a, somebody needs to say to the neighbor, God, I'm waiting for you to make this happen. So the first thing that happens is I'm going back. There starts to be a stirring on the inside right here. Starts to be a stirring deep on the inside. That's number one. Number two, the dream or the stirring just won't leave you. You can't get it out of your head. You can't get it out of your spirit. It just keeps being there. Now, here goes, here goes some of the ways that God stirs purpose by several ways. First of all, and I want you to follow with me and be careful, but I want you to listen real good. Now, I'm not going to be on here long, so I want you all to catch this revelation. Number two, God stirs by several ways. And here you go. One is discontentment with your present position in life. That's it. I'm going to highlight that baby right there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You find yourself discontented with where you are in life. You just, for some reason, you're just tired of being where you're at. Now, sometimes in order to get us to come out of our comfort zone, somebody say comfort zone, God has to stir it on the inside of us. Because let me tell you something. When the Lord called me to develop Pilgrim's Ministry of Deliverance, which is still in existence today, which launched me to becoming the general of deliverance, a worldwide, worldwide deliverance teacher and man of wisdom, God stirred that in my spirit, man. I was working for the state of Delaware, making good money. Are y'all hearing me? I wasn't hurting for finances, but I got discontentment with my present position in life. Now, that don't mean you run out and quit a job. That means you recognize, somebody say it with me, don't quit and walk away with no place to go. But you recognize that God is stirring something inside of you and a change is a coming. The next thing, listen at this one here. Whoa, 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 don't want all of that. Let me get the part that I want. That's the part I want. Act right with me thing. The next part is right here. Let me put a nice little blue color. The job or opportunities in your former position might close out. Now I know some of us freak out. Oh my God, the position where I worked at is closing out. Do you think when God gave you that job that God was totally oblivious that it was getting ready to come to an end at some point? So discontentment with your present position in life can be a part of the stirring. Another is the job or opportunities in your former position closes out, meaning it may not be the devil holding you back from position, from advancement. It may be God having something better. It may be God having something deeper. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? I have counseled hundreds of people who declared, who almost swore, Brother Ivory, please pray for me. There is a spirit of sabotage. It's like my job is getting ready to close out. And I remember one lady I ministered to, I felt like, oh, my God, what's happening, Jesus? Lord, please give me some witness for this young lady because her job is getting ready to quit. And the Holy Ghost turns around and pulls an okie doke on her and me. The job quits. The job ends. But yet, and she has a number of weeks she had been stirred to put out application. And what happened? That job ended and a new position came that paid way more. Come on, somebody. That paid more. That was more advantageous. That was more tuned to where she was at at that present moment. Often, when God advances you, it means that you are finished at the place where you were at. Come on, somebody. And look, I'm going to tell you all another thing. I want you all to get this. Please don't miss this, darling. People say to me sometimes, Brother Ivory, where I work at, there are witches and warlocks and lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Well, guess what? There's you. 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, an appointment of God, an assignment of God. So don't let that bother you. At the end of the day, in our own neighborhood, somebody say up in the hood, in our own town, in our own city, in our own community, everybody ain't born again. Everybody is not blood washed, but you become a living witness, a royal priesthood, and a testimony to the grace and glory of God. Woo, I'm fired up today. Oh, here goes another part. Another one is you keep dreaming it and feeling it and just can't shake it. I like this one here. You keep dreaming it. You keep feeling it. And you just can't shake it, man. You just can't let it go. You're going like, look, I've been trying to shake this. I've been trying to get away with it, get away from it. But you can't. Now, okay. And here goes another one. I like this one. There seems to be, I love my highlighters. Oh, yeah, baby. There seems to be, it seems to be a thread. I said the word thread, but I meant a thread. I need a T right there to be correct boom there seems to be a thread in your past to what becomes your niche to what becomes in other words there's often a thread in your past that relates to what god wants to do in your future did you hear me now this word niche here i use the term niche niche means a comfortable or suitable position suitable position in life or employment. Somebody say niche. Niche. A comfortable or suitable position in life or employment. Also, this word niche often refers to, there we go, this baby right here. Niche often refers to a position or interest that allows someone or something to thrive in a particular environment. I'm telling you, when the Almighty has inspired you it throughout your life, look at the green one. There seems to be a thread in your past to what becomes your niche or your future. I would like to type here, future position. Is anybody listening at the general? In other words, let me show it to you by my life example. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I will never forget, at, at 12 years old, there, I, my, my parents, my aunt and uncle that raised me owned multiple properties. They, owned, they rented out. And I sometimes would go and talk to some of the people renting the houses, and I would sit in their living rooms with them, and they would ask me adult questions. Now, I know it sounds crazy. At one time, listen at this, listen at this, Prophet Kimberly McNutt, listen at this, Kimberly, Kimberly, they would say, say to me, Ivory, what you think of this? Ivory, what you think of that? Here I am, 12 years old, giving counsel to adults. 12 years old, I got to one point when I was in high school, I got mad. I said, why everybody always coming to me with all their problems? But today, the very gift where everyone has come to me about their problems have literally made me a powerful anointed man than God and a very rich man. Why? Because the very thing that was in me, the niche, the ability, the gifting was already part of my future. Every place of employment. It was there, sneaking up his head. Just like Joseph, come on, somebody. Every place they put Joseph, his prophetic dreaming gift always worked, always spoke. Made his family mad, made his brethren jealous. <laughs> but that boy's gift, his niche, his ability was study there. It was growing all the time. Come on, somebody. It was growing all the time. It was growing when they threw him in the pit. Come on, somebody. It was growing when he was in Potiphar's house and got lied on. It was growing when he went into the prison with everybody else in jail. There he was. But all that wisdom inside, it was growing. It was growing when Pharaoh was sent for him. It was growing when he saved his brothers and sisters. It was growing. Come on now, y'all. You're going to make me preach up in here. His ability was growing in every place where he went. He was in a pit. He was in Potiphar's Pelly, Pelly house. He was in jail. He became a part of the palace of Pharaoh. In every place, that gift, that ability, 
that thing that he was hard for, used for, asked for, desired for, and envied for, put him in a place that brought him help for many people and wealth for himself. I'm telling you, the ability that God has put inside of you will give you the ability to be help to many people and wealth to your own life. The things in my life, Timberland, prophet as me not, the wealth in my life has become generational. It's going to be past me. It's going to pass me and Evelyn. Are you hearing me? But each, me and Evelyn both have giftings and graces that has followed us to each level. And I'm going to go back and tell you some of the things that happened. They followed me in stages where I, the, I had to capture the idea. I began to realize it was God. There it is right there. It was God at work in me. It, both the desire and to work out his good pleasure. The things were stirring on the inside of me. Has everybody got anything stirring on the inside of you? Next thing, there was a dream that just would not leave me. And God began to stir this purpose. He began to stir it with discontentment with my present position. I became, I cannot stand not creating anything. When I wake up, I wake up to bring something in the earth. The job or opportunity in my former position, I've had it close out. How many of y'all are right there right now? I'm gonna prophesy to somebody. You know that your season at this place is done. And I'm gonna tell you something about season. Can anybody say season? When your season is done, there will be other people who want you to stay where you are because it's advantageous to them. But really you got to understand, amen. And this, listen at this, prophetess, prophetess, be not, woman of God, this don't mean you leave a job ignorantly. You can organize for the next level. You can save for the next level. You can bring your cost of living down for the next level. You can make preparations. Why? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. I'll go up and tell you why I'm talking like this. Here it is right here. Boom. That is. For I wisdom, I am wisdom, contemporary English version, Proverbs 8, 12. I am wisdom. And common sense is my closest friend. Come on, somebody. Woo, glory. Are you hearing me? I'm going to make a dive and go, boom, made it nice and big. I am wisdom. And common sense is my closest friend. I possess knowledge and sound judgment. So if you are feeling a move, if you're feeling a shift, if you're feeling in your spirit, man, that God has been detected to another level, they use wisdom and common sense. Let wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. The fools despise instruction. So use wisdom and common sense and the shift to your place called next. Hey, I'm going to preach that one day too. I'm going to come over. I got a book called A Spiritual Place Called Next. Let me go ahead and finish this here because I got to go. I got other counseling sessions to do. Now, let me do, uh, work with this. I said the word here. Also, in Job 32, verse 8, Job 32, verse 8, it ain't 88, let me take that right out, boom, there it is, Job chapter 32, verse 8, says, there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding, I pray unto God that the inspiration of the Almighty give me creative ideas, give me understanding, and give me wisdom. I'm going to read it again. Job chapter 32, verse 8. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. I pray to God that every single one of you that are listening at, my, at the sound of my voice, that God will take his spirit and give you understanding. Inspiration of God is what gives us creative ideas, as it did with Scripture. Remember, it said in the book of Timothy, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable teaching and doctrine. Well, the inspiration of the Almighty is why he's stirring stuff in you. Now, this message today is primarily dealing with embracing it. It's dealing with preparing ourselves, wisdom keys in business and engaging the roadblocks to vision casting. 
and the roadblocks mostly in it is making bad decisions, premature decisions, or when you feel the stirring, you stay stuck. Let me deal with this word inspiration. The word inspiration is comes from the word nishama, neshama, nishyama, which means vital breath or God breathes. <laughs> When you get an inspirational thing coming from God, when you get an inspiration and a desire to shift, to create, to start a business, to go up higher, to move to another level in life or in ministry or in entrepreneurship, God, God breathes on you, soldier. Is anybody hearing me? God breathes on you. Praise be to God. Listen to what it says. It is the vital breath. God breathes creativity through our spirit man. That's right. God breathes God's breath of creativity through our spirit man. Divine inspiration is by the Holy Spirit. Also, intellect, intelligent ideas come from God breathing. So when you get inspired, it's God breathing. When you get that desire to step up higher and become more or shift the job or create a business or walk in a greater anointing, God is breathing on you. Woo, I'm far up today. Now, 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 stay with me, stay with me because y'all, I told y'all I got to go to work. I still got some counseling and deliverance sessions to do. Number, number three, worrying about who's jealous or people's foolishness uh, are lessons from Jeremiah. Stop worrying about jealous people. Jealous people ain't never went nowhere with you. They ain't carried you no more, and they ain't helped you get nowhere. So let me help you. Love them, but forget them as far as their jealousy. Look what Jeremiah 1 set 5 says. Before I form thee, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Before I form thee in the belly, I knew thee. So God knew you. God knew that the spirit called ivory that would live in this body would become who I am. God knew it. Just in case you didn't, God did. And before, the next one, before thou camest forth out of the wound, I sanctified you. The creative ability, the calling of God, the ideas that he put in you, God sanctifies or set them apart. He set you apart for it. But what you going to do is allow somebody jealous, envious, or crazy acting, causing you to back up. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not backing up for you. Next thing it says here in the book of Jeremiah 1.5, and he, Jeremiah's uh, uh, niche was to be a prophet to the nation. His divine calling was a prophet to the nation. And God tells him, I ordain, I ordain thee a prophet to the nation. Are you hearing me? When did God do it? Before he was formed in his mother's belly. I knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb. I sanctified you. I set you apart. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. I know. Check this thing. Look at me. Look at bro. Real good. I belong here. I belong to rock just like this. Come on, I'm messing with somebody. I belong to be the general. I belong to walk in an anointing like this. I was called by God, divinely purpose. It was anointing of God that made me who I am. And guess what? I'm not acting in pride. I just figured out I didn't luck up. Nobody just slid me in. It was divine purpose. Now, saying what you can't do is a sign of human doubt and fear. Look what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 1, 6, he came up, man, always comes up with a reason. Turn around to your neighbor and say, cut your excuses. God ain't looking for your excuses, looking for your surrender. I'm going to say it again. God ain't looking for your excuse. God is looking for your surrender. This is what it says here. Then said I, uh, uh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. I am a child. So he was coming up with all kinds of excuses like me and you do. Just like me and you do, coming up with all kinds of reasons why we can't be what God said we are. Here we got fire in our belly, desire in our belly, passion in our heart, a, a dream in our, in, our, in our night season. And here we are. Well, uh, 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 I, Lord, I behold, I cannot speak for I'm a child. I love what God turns around and says, Jeremiah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't know about you. I'm having fun, but y'all better stay with me because I got to get out of here. I got to get up out of here. Jeremiah 1-7. 
But the Lord said unto me, say not I'm a child. The Lord is saying to some of y'all, stop saying what you're not. But start to saying what you are because of who he is. Are you hearing me? Listen to what he said. For thou shalt go to all I shall send thee. The reason why I'm getting her done. The reason why I'm kicking hard, walking strong, walking powerfully, for thou, thou shalt go to all I have sent thee. That's not squeezing in places where they don't want you. You spend more time worrying about who don't want you. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth and shame three devils. You're worrying about who don't accept you. You're worrying about whether you can get in somebody's doggone click instead of find your position and purpose in life. I said it. I said it. And look at what he says there. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And the accomplishing part of these things is God's the one that send thee. God sent Walmart to build Walmart. God sent great ministries that have touched lives. God sent certain people who have created creative ideas. God sent you to do it. Look what the Lord said in Jeremiah 1.5. And whatsoever I commend thee, thou shalt speak. In other words, shut up saying your stuff and start speaking what he said. Are you hearing me? I had a person one time say to me, did you call yourself the general of deliverance or did God say so? Did you make that name up or did God say it? Sweetheart, in 2003, an angel of the Lord appeared to me, giving me some pertinent instructions about my life and then my death. He told me, I have sent you as a general to speak into the life of my people, to instruct them, to finish it out, to counsel. That's why I'm out here doing counseling. And then he said, you will go home. The prophetess Kimberly, I know right now that I am setting in the place of a place called finish. There is a finishing anointing. There is a completion anointing upon my life. And I'm living it and I'm walking it in not right now. Listen, that was the night, 2003. I'll never will forget it. It was in Kansas. Are oh, you hearing me? I was in Fort Riley, Kansas, in the hospital when the spirit of the almighty spoke to me and gave me the wisdom of who I am and how I would operate right now. Right now in this season. That's why when somebody goes, I just don't see how you're counseling people and doing deliverance on Zoom and this, that, and the other. I look up and say, sweetheart, I'm sorry. You can't see because you wasn't with me. You'd have, you'd have to be with me. You'd have to catch it when he throw this, sweetheart. And I'm sorry, you, I did, I, you didn't catch it. I caught it. And I ran with it. And behold, I'm living it. Jeremiah 1 and 8. Be not afraid of their faces. That's another reason with some of us. Somebody say, some of us. Some of us. There was a time I feared their faces. Oh, my God. Uh, they're looking at me funny. They don't believe me. And I saw the look on their face. But he said, be not afraid of their faces. Are you hearing that? Some people get all bound up by the looks of folk, by the faces of folk. The Lord said, I am with thee to deliver thee. Are you hearing me? I got to make that one. Y'all, that's bad, boy. That's bad. That's bad, y'all. He said, I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So if God has the one that causes the ministry, the business, the entrepreneurship, the creative idea, if God is behind it, who cares about the faces of men? Listen, most people don't know what they want to do with themselves. And you sitting around letting them worry you half to death. You trying to please folks that will confuse themselves. I look at people and I'm going like, I don't mean any harm. I don't mean to be smart with you. But you see, I know exactly where I'm at and what I'm doing. I know that I am working on the last part of my life, then I die. I was told by God to drop this kind of stuff, put it on YouTube, put it out there to the nation, and then I will go home. So you see why you mess around. I don't believe Hopkins. I don't like how you say him. I don't care. I don't like his ministry. I can't see it. I don't really care whether you do. I care whether the ones embrace it who God has called to embrace it. I cannot add a deposit to someone that, that is not worth it at all in what I'm doing. There are some folks that they're not worth a deposit from you because they don't honor it. Now, let me let get you to understand this. The number one thing is 1 Corinthians 127, it got chosen of God. In other words, it was God's choice. God, it was God's choice. 
that inspiration inside of you, that ability inside of you was God's choice. God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound that which is wise, to confound the wise. God have chosen, I don't know, see, I don't got, let, me, let me talk in English. God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Somebody say God have chosen. Let me go on up a little bit further here. Thank you, Lord. First Corinthians uh, 1, 27, it says, God has chosen the boast, the base things. Come on, come on, come on. The base things. Till I, I, uh, God had chosen the base things of the world and the things which are despised. God did it. I like this. Let's go a, bit, go a little bit further. God have chosen, yea, the things, let me go ahead, the things which are not, to bring to not the things that are. It is God that has chosen all of these. And I love the fact, fun part here, and I'm almost coming to an end because I got to go downstairs and get, do a deliverance and counseling session. I'm busy. But let me finish this for you and get up out of here. I'm a busy man. 1 Corinthians 1 29. Why did God chose us? Why did God supersede even our fears, our doubts, our disbelief, our fear of men's mouths? Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. This word should glory is a, is a word that means to boast, to vaunt or praise or boast about, especially in an excessive way. So God is saying, I did this. That no flesh could glory. That nobody could be exalted and say, I did it for himself. It was God that put me in this position. And you said around, well, if I get a new job or if I start a business, somebody might. How in the world is somebody not liking you? Stop the king of king and the Lord of lords from having his way with you. Are you kidding me? Well, brother, I be, wait a minute. Wait a minute, brother. I be, there's three witches on my job. So? There's three warlocks praying against me. So you got one God, one Lord, and one faith that's sustaining you. Look at me. So I get tired of saints talking to me about the witches on their job as if they're witch almighty, as if they're warlock almighty. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, my God. My God, I thank you, O oh Lord, that nothing can stop what God has started. Nothing can take down what God has set up. God opened doors that no man can shut. To, and he shuts doors no man can open. Let me get with the last one and get on downstairs. I told y'all I ain't going to be on here long. I'm far up. I'm going to say this to you while I go to the last of it. If this message has blessed you in any way, cash app us with a $5 donation. You don't have to. This is not something, though Jesus told me to tell you, give me five. That's Ivory saying it. If it has blessed you, our cash app is General Ivory Hopkins. Cash app us a $5 donation just to bless me and Emma. Or if you don't feel led, just enjoy the message. Got Y'all hear me? If you don't feel led, just enjoy it. Let me finish this last part because I got to go. Be careful spreading yourself too thin to the point that your purpose doesn't get done. Because here goes one of the dangers that happen to successful people. There are people, when they see the success on your life, they will do things that will get in the way and cause you to spit too thin. Watch how some people will try to guide you away from purpose. Now, here goes what it says in the book of Ecclesiastics. It says, to Ecclesiastes 3.1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Do you know that, that Laban, Jacob's uncle, wanted to keep him right where he was so that he could survive and live off of the ability that he had in his life? I'm telling you, some of you, you got a multiplication anointing on you. What you do multiplies for somebody else. And you need to be ready when God is getting ready to tell you it's time to let that multiply for you. Laban told Jacob when he tried to leave him, he said, I have learned by experience that as long as you're around, my business increases. Now, ain't that deep. Somebody 
got blessed as long as you became their servant. Somebody got blessed as long as you stayed in a position where there was no advancement, where you wasn't going forward. I'm talking to somebody up in here. Don't you let nobody get so blessed because you stayed too long till you couldn't create what God put in you. Many people in my life, I want to tell you, my dear friends, I'm going to finish this last one. Many people that I know, what they've done is like God gave out the talents. He gave one five, he gave one uh, two, and he gave one one. And the others, the one with five made it multiply. The one with two made it multiply. The one with one with one hit it and buried it. And he looked at him, he said, you're a wicked servant. You, don't you know that I gave you the gifts? I gave you the abilities. I gave you the creative ideas to make them multiply. How dare you set on them? Kimberlyn, Brother Don, DeAndre, DeAndre, listen to this, DeAndre. To me, there's nothing worse in the world about, about dying is someone who died who never finished. Went to the ground, buried him in a grave. And nothing in life is left that says who they were. Are you hearing me? Be careful of allowing others to spread you so thin to the point that your purpose doesn't get done. Pray for the spirit of favor to operate on your behalf. Father, as I'm going out of here, I pray that the spirit of favor will operate on my brothers and sisters' behalf. Father, I also, I pray also, don't you allow procrastination or laziness cause you not to use time wisely in accomplishing, and I meant the word, let me put that little your, your purpose slash dream. Put time in gathering information and contacts related to your desire. If God gives you to desires, God also gives you contact. Listen at this, uh, a prophet is Kimberlin. Listen at this girl. Listen at this prophet Kimberlin. Somebody will say, but brother Ivory, I went to throw and throw and they didn't help me. Guess what? They wasn't the chosen one. They wasn't the chosen one. Next, brother Ivory, I, I, some of these people won't let me in. They, they're trying to block me from succeeding. Guess what? They're not the chosen one. Next, because they ain't going to be able to stop God. So pray for the spirit of favor to operate on your behalf. Do, don't you allow procrastination or laziness to cause you not to use time wisely in accomplishing your purpose and dream. I got to get out of here. Put time in gathering information and contact related to your purpose, desire, or divine calling. I'm getting ready to go. My dear friend, this is some of the wisdom that I just wanted to drop up on y'all. I wanted to drop it in here right now. Amen. And get ready to go. If this has blessed you, Go to our cash app, General Ivory Hopkins. Amen. So a $5 seed, just a $5 donation to bless us. I can, I can always tell people, if you don't feel led, please don't do it. If you don't feel led, please don't do it. If you don't feel like doing it out of your heart, please don't do it. But I say this, Father, you're going to bless your people, whether they show me anything at all, because I'm not going to be so arrogant as to think that I am the thing stopping people from receiving. If you don't give me money, you can't believe that's a lie from the pit of hell. Father God, you're going to bless your people anyway. Lord God, your people are wise enough to know to deposit in that which you yourself, God, has deposited into. So, Father, I thank you for every individual listening. May this word help them grow. I thank you for everyone sowing a seed or did not sow a seed, didn't give nothing. I pray, God, you bless them. I pray, God, you move mightily on their behalf. And, folks, I got to get out of here because I got to get ready to go downstairs and the other side of our office and do some counseling, and do some work. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you like I usually do. I want you always to remember, God, he is watching. Bye-bye. I'm out.